Recently, we've had quite a few comments on what I think is a commonly misunderstood and highly controversial practice here at the table saw. And that's whether or not it's okay to use the rip fence and the miter gauge at the same time. So today we're gonna to take a look at this highly debatable topic and hopefully clear a few things up. Now, as always, there's a lot of different schools of thought on how to get a job done and a lot of different ideas on what is safe and what is not. But being uneasy or uncomfortable here at the table saw or any other tool in the shop for that matter is one of the quickest ways to get hurt. So if you're uncomfortable with doing something, just find another way to do it. As seen many times over the years in my videos, I like to set the rip fence to a desired measurement and then I use my miter gauge to make a cut while still holding the material against the fence. Some viewers see this as an unsafe practice, but I use this method quite a lot for cutting simple dados and grooves, half laps, other various joinery methods here at the table saw and it works quite well. Now there's two key things that needs to be noted here. One, a lot of the times what I'll do is I'll set my fence to a desired measurement. I'll butt my piece up against the fence and while holding it tight to the miter gauge, I'll slide my fence out of the way and then I'll make my cut. This is sometimes overlooked as I've actually done this in videos before and then had people claim that I did something unsafe. And as it turns out, they just didn't happen to catch what I actually did. As long as you slide the fence out of your way before you make the cut, this is a 100% safe operation. If you trust your rip fence scale, this is a great way to knock out a couple of same length cuts easily, quickly, safely, without any setup. Now, when I am using the rip fence and the miter gauge at the same time, I'm making what we call a non-through cut, meaning that I'm not actually cutting all the way through the workpiece to create an off cut. Using the rip fence and the miter gauge together to make a through cut where we actually wanna cut a piece off would leave an off cut piece trapped between the spinning blade and the fence and this will come back at you. Now, I've talked about this many times in past videos, the most recent being when I showed my preferred method for making repeated cross cuts here at the table saw. In that video, I explain why I do things a little differently than what's commonly seen. So I'll leave a link to that and a few other videos on this topic in the video description for those that wanna learn a little bit more. Now, unfortunately, because of legalities, manufacturers and classrooms commonly drive into people's heads that you can never use the rip fence and the miter gauge at the same time because it will cause kickback. And in the real world, that's just not a hard, fast rule. There's honestly quite a few situations where using the rip fence and the miter gauge at the same time is kind of the only way to go. Cutting accurate and repeatable tenons at the table saw is one of those times. The rip fence provides a positive registration that makes all four sides of your workpiece line up perfectly with absolute zero chance of kickback. Now you can use a stop block for this operation as well, but by being able to use the fence for the entire duration of the cut, you completely remove the chance for your workpiece to slide one way or another on the miter gauge, which can make for a less than desirable finished product. The same is true when cutting rabbits while using a sacrificial fence. The fence provides positive registration, the miter gauge drives the material through. And whether I'm milling single blade dados or using a stack, again, I will use my fence to set my measurement, make my first cut, make my second cut, and then hog out the waste. Now, I'm gonna say this one more time. If you're making through cuts where you're actually creating an off cut, do not use your rip fence and your miter gauge at the same time. The off cut will get hung up between the blade and the fence and it will come back at you and you will have a no good, very bad day. On non-through cuts, with a little of what I'm going to call common sense, you're gonna be just fine.